Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be playing with a different deck than usual. We're gonna be playing with some Viking Bridge spam because I kinda decided since everyone was playing Viking Bridge spam uh, back in the day I was like kinda late to this because obviously I'm not a Viking player. I've realized that uh, it's not a bad of idea to like record some videos uh, uh, after everything happened. So, uh, I'm gonna get some Necromancer action going against these devils. I kinda hope that it's gonna get some value. Get some apes going, tanking for my stuff. I'm gonna play a Twins at the bridge and if he plays a Skeleton Horde on that, I'm gonna play instantly Blitz. <laughs> which will be a perfect cleanup to his push. And I think that the game was already sealed. My opponent was just too aggressive at the bridge and he's gonna pay the highest, I mean not the highest price. It was just a tower but on the grand scheme of things, if uh, two good players like play a uh, very competitive and close game, uh, uh, one tower down usually can kinda seal the deal. I'm gonna play Viking here since my opponent kinda sent me good game already. Which I don't think he's like trying to bluff it and then come back. Yeah, I'm gonna just take his Viking Tower because the game was already sealed and he knows that. So, yeah, that's gonna be a very quick against uh, Trippy uh, in the first uh, minute and 30 seconds of this video. Let's jump to the next one. And the second game of the video will be against Oki, which has uh, 2.4k uh, medals. I mean, 2.24k uh, medals. Uh, which is uh, a bit lower than I said, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna reach his uh, 2.4k by this season uh, for sure. He's gonna get a uh, shield scout against my ghost, which I don't think is a uh, best thing to do. I'm gonna get a Viking against his Dark Knight for sure, because uh, so far, uh, no questions asked. Like, the best counter against Dark Knight is either kiting it into your Viking Tower so you can uh, activate it. Or uh, doing the exact uh, thing I'm doing, which is playing a Viking against it. So I'm gonna play Necromancer here. He's gonna get a very good Bomberman though, so I don't think I actually want to go into it uh, anymore because, yeah, he gets a very nice cleanup, and that's gonna be an unfortunate uh, part of this matchup because I pretty much. Uh, I pretty much cannot uh, like kill his Bomberman when he plays it, so every time he plays a Bomberman I kinda will have to switch the focus on my uh, pressure. I kinda opted to play two small spells because they still kill like crucial uh, units like uh, Piercing Archer and Necromancer, which are very important to like just get rid of. Um, but yeah, th there are drawbacks and uh, one of them is that I won't be able to do anything against a Bomberman unless the defense like takes forever, then I will uh, have like opportunities to get rid of it uh, the other way. I'm gonna play Twins on the opposite side just to pressure a bit. I'm pretty sure it won't connect unless this thief goes like ham. I was about to say like... If this... Uh, if this fifth were to delete the phone hat, I was pretty sure I would even play a blitz on this uh, phone hat, but I was kind of too slow already, uh, as I was uh, trying to commentate instead of playing. So yeah, he's gonna be playing uh, uh, a bomberman on one side, and that's a very clear sign. I already uh, thought about it. I have to go on the opposite side because there's no way I'm gonna deal with this bomberman. Unless he just allows my bomber to do it, that was very cool, and I got a lot of uh, splash damage, I'm gonna get something done right now, I would love to actually counter this Dark Knight, but yeah, it's gonna get to my tower, which was a very smart cycle on his part, uh, yeah, we'll have to... Uh, we're gonna have to like reset, I'm gonna play Viking in the back, because if you don't know what to do, it's usually the best play, unless you're like against uh, a card that you really, really have to keep a Viking against, like, uh, for instance, it's gonna be general, like, against general you uh, really want to keep uh, your Viking exclusive, okay, he went for the Dark Knight, it's time to die, no excuses, also I'm gonna try to get some spells against it, okay, uh, this bomber won't be enough, unfortunately I went for some aggressive plays but it wasn't enough, 
uh, yeah, right now he pretty much uh, has to do nothing and he will win, which is very unfortunate spot to be in. Uh, I'm gonna get a Viking here. I would love to get something else in play, but yeah, I don't think I can uh, get anything else. I'm gonna play Viking again. I mean, this Viking will put a lot of work against this Dark Knight, unless it won't get like this very last important hit. Yeah, that's gonna be unfortunately GG's and he played pretty much it picture perfect, getting every advantage he could. He even gets a lightning, which uh, I didn't know he had, but uh, yeah, very tough one. I would love to win this matchup, honestly, and uh, I, will, I will just queue very quickly uh, to get uh, him in the next one. I unfortunately didn't queue into Oki, I queued against Chiva Chase, so that's gonna be a uh, this matchup. Definitely one of a kind. I'm gonna cycle bullets. J just because I'm gonna just cycle bullets, uh, make my uh, mana flow. I'm gonna play Ghost in the back. He obviously can play Viking into this, but I don't really mind it. He's gonna play Ghost on his own, so uh, yeah, that's gonna be the thing. I'm gonna play Viking here. Because I don't think there's a huge drawback to this play. I'm gonna get a kill on this necklace, which is very huge. Not quite. But it was close uh, and I definitely enjoyed it. I'll, I'll have to play Blitz on this. And I think this will be very huge because I still have a living Viking. My uh, support troop, which is a bomber, doesn't die. And I'm gonna get a twins going. So yeah, that's already very tough uh, situation for Chivache. He's gonna definitely drop this tower and uh, he's gonna even get a lightning, which is obviously at zero. And I'm gonna be having a very comfortable formal lead uh, starting this game. So yeah, that's very cool, at least. Right now I think I'm gonna just play Viking at the opposite side, because even if he like pressures with me, me with twins, I still have a ghost to defend. And it, the ghost is like the best way of uh, countering the twins, because it gets the drop uh, pretty well, uh, unless I absolutely mess it up. Very well done. Also this piercing archer will get some value on the tower. But it doesn't really matter because I'm getting a counter push on the opposite side and he definitely cannot afford uh, a defense against it. I'm gonna play some twins to just add a, a piling pressure. I'm gonna get a lot of damage here and the only thing I'm kinda worried uh, is uh, if I can defend this Viking. And if I can, that's gonna be a very cool uh, defense overall. I'm gonna play... Uh, a ghost here to just clean up this necromancer. Unfortunately, the ghost will take my tower, which is very unfortunate. But at the same time, I pretty much couldn't like get away with uh, playing this greedy forever. I'm gonna play the thief here uh, against his piercing archer. That's gonna be very cool. He actually uh, misplaces Viking once again, which will uh, kind of mean that I can uh, go in once again. For instance, uh, with the twins, uh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have resources to stop that. I kinda missed the kite on this bomber. Uh, this Viking will get a hit, but it doesn't really matter because he has uh, too many stuff on his Viking tower and that's gonna be very well played GG's uh, in this mirror matchup. Like, definitely uh, more like uh, bridge spamming troops were the factor that I've won this game because he was having spells in response, and uh, usually spells don't score well against bridge spamming cards, so yeah. I kinda have the matchup, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Win against Chivache gave me 10 medals, that's definitely nice to see. Let's jump to the next game. And we're gonna get actually once again Chivache on our lower uh, queue. We're gonna cycle Ghost once again, because I think like in this matchup is the safest play. I'm gonna play once again Viking against that, and if he counterplays, he counterplays, I pretty much cannot do anything about it. I'm gonna do something about that, definitely. He's playing Twins into... <laughs> into my Viking, which is definitely not a play, at least not the, the one I've heard about. I'm gonna play Twins on my own and start uh, my attack. He's gonna get a Lightning, which is definitely a mistake, since now I can play uh, Fifth, and he definitely doesn't have any response. The Viking will connect to the tower and uh, 
once a viking connects to a tower this tower is gonna be down so i'm gonna get actually a very healthy attack uh, on his viking tower and then blitz like it can be uh, controversial it may have been like an overcommitment but all i know is he has only 252 health uh, on his uh, on his viking tower so anytime like uh, You'll have to do a miracle to uh, pretty much come back to this game because all I have to do like is mitigate his damage and then like throw some spells, that kind of stuff. It's uh, really not that difficult if you ask me and he'll have to kinda be uh, a genius to come back into this game. He throws a cyclone, he throws a uh, lightning. I'm gonna get a ghost going and I definitely think he has nothing to stop it. Yeah, there, that's gonna be the game against Chivache. Very sad that I've actually gotten him twice because uh, he definitely doesn't enjoy losing 20 medals against me. But it is what it is. I'm gonna just hop to the next game and uh, for this video it's gonna be the last. And this game I'm gonna be facing a 6 star player. I presume it was the 6 star I've played uh, yesterday or something. Uh, he already has a decent amount of medals, like 136, that's a lot. But I kinda expected that he's gonna improve very quickly. I'm gonna get a Necromancer, there's no reason to just uh, wait and try to uh, hide it. I'm gonna actually sacrifice, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna sack this Necromancer, there's no reason to just overprotect. I'm gonna get a fifth, a pretty late one, but it's not too bad, he actually gives up. Well, that's weird. Oh, I don't want to end on that note, but uh, yeah, since he's not coming back, I'm gonna play one more, because the video cannot end on that depressing note. See you guys by then. And the last game of this video will be against Porter Nee. If he quits, he quits. I don't really even care, I just want to wrap this video up. He plays Balloon, which will be a very huge nuisance for me, since I don't have like the best counters uh, to the air. And frankly, I don't have any counters to the air uh, even now on hand. I probably would be faster to sack with my blitz, but I wanted to apply some pressure as well. And that definitely doesn't help that my Necromancer, which is like my only response to a balloon, uh, will be my last card. So, yeah, well, pretty unfortunate, but yeah. Uh, with winding out of the way, uh, we can just uh, get a huge counter against this footman. And... Uh, play uh, one more very strong attacks which I don't think he stops I don't think he stops there are so many apes and yet he plays a steel hammer which is like the best counter to apes uh, to date okay he gets a bullet to clean everything up that was pretty embarrassing as I wanted to play fifth to just finish the game but yeah he's gonna still hold onto it and I think definitely he's not out of the game because if he somehow some way finds a way to like defend my pushes perfectly he can still get a damage with balloon because all I have for it is a necromancer. Unfortunately that's gonna be one of these decks where you kinda have to play very uh, huge counterplay against against air decks which is very counterintuitive and can be difficult. But it's what you gotta do against this type of decks because you pretty much, as you can see, you cannot easily defend the balloon. And if it was uh, coming uh, with a flying crop, it would have been even harder. So, he's gonna get a uh, very decent footman, but my viking will clean them all. Uh, Fifth will take the tower, will uh, hop to the viking tower, and that's gonna be probably a 3-star with a viking doing the last swing. There we go. So, GG's, nice plate. Uh, that's gonna be it for the, today's video, I hope I've brought some uh, interesting viking uh, deck because usually viking birdsome is played with a big spell which is like fireball or um, flying bomb or poison and uh, I've played uh, neither of these, I've played two small spells because like bullets are way faster, they counter some cards that uh, this deck kind of struggles against uh, and I've played also a bomber just to cycle faster to my bird spam card. So that was uh, basically like the uh, basic idea of uh, why I've played this deck and not like the classic bridge spam. I kind of feel way more comfortable with because I can um, uh, make more plays with uh, this set of cards. Uh, 
And while uh, the classic Viking Bird Spam is like better for laddering because you get uh, less weak matchups, this one is way better competitively because it has way more outplay potential. So yeah, that's gonna be it from me in today's video. If you enjoy this Viking Bird Spam gameplay, uh, you can leave a sub. And if you are already, <laughs> thanks for being a trustworthy subscriber. I definitely appreciate that. And yeah, uh, whether you're subscribed or not, uh, although I would love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, I'm gonna see you guys in the next video of Marina. Stay tuned.